turn to Mark. take out. That they take out all the way from 9 verse 10, verse 11, all the way through verse 20. They take it right out of there. Mm, they say the viewer manuscripts don't have it in there. That's the new ones they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. If they don't take it out, they have a little note in the footnote saying these should not be in there. But if you have a Schofield Bible, that's what it tells you. It tells you those verses should not be there. Anyway, we disagree with those people. In Mark 16, verse 15, this is Jesus. He said unto them, Go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To every creature. That's pretty plain. Jesus plainly told us to go and to do something and to preach something. And he told us who to preach it to. You can have a seat. And therefore, that's what our commission is as a church. It also tells us in Matthew 28 um, the same thing. It also tells us in John. It also tells us in Luke. It tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The same thing, basically. And it gives us the great commission in five places. Uh, in each of the Gospels and once in um, the book of Acts. <coughs> so we, we have it very plainly that God wants His church, He wants His people to go into all the world, not just parts of it, and to preach something. To preach what? To preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Well, that's when Jesus came into this world. He was sent from uh, his Father because he loved the world, because man is a sinner, and that man needs someone to die for them. And therefore God sent his Son into the world to die for um, sinful man, and that he did on Calvary. He shed his precious blood. That's very important that, uh, that you know that. Some people say, like John MacArthur, uh, what was I looking at doing that bit? Was I reading a book or reading something of his? Um, I thought I commented when I was doing it. Reading a book, an article or something. Magazine, a whole arc of his talking about, um, what was he talking about? Talking about salvation and about the so forth. He went through the whole article, several pages, John MacArthur, talking about uh, salvation, but never one time mentioned the blood of Jesus Christ was necessary. He said it was very important that Jesus <coughs> gave his body. He, he went through all kinds of stuff, but never one time uh, mentioned the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's because he doesn't believe in the blood. Right. But the blood's very important. That's the gospel. That's part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the sh Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins, the Bible says. So therefore, God tells us to preach the gospel. And the gospel is that. It talks about the blood. It talks about Jesus dying on Calvary and, and, and giving his life, yes, but also shedding his precious blood. He was then buried for three days and three nights. And he was in a, a, a tomb. And then he rose again. And he appeared to, to hundreds of people. And then, after so many days, he went up to be on the right hand of the Father. That's the ascension that we talk about. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're supposed to be preaching and teaching and telling um, this, uh, the lost people in this world. And I thank God that someone told me that gospel story. Man. Or I may not be here tonight. In fact, I know I wouldn't be here tonight preaching. I wouldn't be here in a church. I'd be like everybody else, probably at home, sitting there relaxing, taking it easy, and, and making excuses if I thought there was a reason to go to church. I said, well, my arm hurts and my back hurts. And, you know, it's been a long day. And, you know, you, you come up with the same excuses too. For what, by the grace of God, um, presenting the gospel to you, uh, and you get saved, you'd probably be in the same place or be in, in a graveyard or in a, a, a bar somewhere or, or you'd be doing whatever the world's doing tonight down at the ball field. Well, I'm sorry, that's the, that's the Christians, I forgot. But anyway, you'd be doing whatever the world does just like them if it wasn't for the gospel of Jesus Christ coming to you and God speaking to you. But that's our commission as a church. And Maria, don't you come here. Uh, last week we started... And I'm going to give you a copy of this. There's enough for everybody. 
And I want you to look at this in just a minute. But before I do that, I want to uh, get into something else real quickly. I just want to cover real briefly. Turn over to Colossians chapter 1. We're going to look at that paper in just a second. Probably should have went did this first, but that's fine. Thank I'll go ahead and give you that. Colossians chapter 1. A lot of people say that, well, we're going soul winning. Well, actually, we don't go soul winning. We don't go soul winning. It's impossible for me and you to go soul winning. Mm -hmm. I would split hairs again with someone who said, oh, we have a soul winning program. Well, that's fine. Uh, but the fact is, we Christians don't go soul winning. We do not win souls. We go soul warning. And there's a big difference in soul winning and soul warning. It's our job to warn people. That's what Paul said. It's our job to warn every man. Look at uh, verse 28 in Colossians chapter 1. Last week I went through several verses there talking about in verse 25 where Paul was made a minister according to the dispensation of God. That's a period of time. And he was in the period of time that God was now um, going to give the, give the gospel to the Gentiles. He said, well, what about Rahab the harlot? Yes, there are some uh, scarce uh, times over in the Old Testament when God did save a Gentile. Um, in fact, He saved Nineveh, a wicked city, the whole place. Uh, there are times when God did reach out and save a Gentile here and there. But for the most part, God was uh, speaking only to Israel at that time, the children of Israel. That was His people, His chosen people. It wasn't until here, the, till this time, that God was reaching out for the first time, and Paul was that first missionary to the Gentile. Peter was a missionary to the Jews. And therefore Paul was saying that God had made him a minister, a minister for this very reason. To reach out to the Gentiles. And that's what it says there in verse 27. And then in verse 28, it's, and he goes on to say, I'm not going to go back over those verses, says, whom we preach. Whom is talking, referring back to Jesus Christ back in verse 27 and uh, 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 previous verses. Whom we preach warning every man. And that's what Paul said. We're supposed to be warning people about a hell. About a hell that is soon to come for those who die without Christ. And that's the, a fact. They have no alternative. They have heaven or hell. If they reject Christ and they reject of heaven and God's plan of salvation, then their only alternative is not to come back as a, a turtle or a plant. Or just to wander out in space as a star. No. Their alternative is heaven or hell. Right. And if you reject the one, you only have one more option. And it's yours made automatically. Because you have rejected Christ, hell will be your home for eternity. So it's our job as a Christian. It's my job as a preacher. It's Brother Jack's job as a pastor, as a preacher. And Brother Bill, if he's called preaching, it's his job to warn people. And it's your job as a Christian, a child of God, because you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Right. I'm a preacher. Here's a preacher. There's a preacher. We're supposed to give out the gospel. That's our job. But yet, that doesn't eliminate... People that sit in the pew and, 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 and up there because you're still an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You're supposed to be carrying the gospel and warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Jesus Christ. The only way can present anything perfect in Jesus Christ, the first place is through Jesus Christ accepting Him as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. So that is the groundwork there for Soul winning and soul warning. God does the winning. It's we who do the warning. When we go up to someone and we present a gospel tract or talk with someone about Christ, we're warning them. If they say, yes, I want to be saved. Oh boy, that's great, but I can't save them. I couldn't save myself because my righteousness was as filthy rags. I was a sinner myself needing to be saved. I needed a Savior who came into this world who died for me. They need the same Savior. I can't save them. If I could save anybody, I'd save my girls and make sure they're saved and save my wife and people I know, that'd be the first people I'd save. But I can't do that. Only God can do the saving. It's the Holy Spirit of God that convicts the person. And it's God who saves the person. All I can do is take them the gospel and warn them about a hell that's coming if they reject Christ. That's my job. To do the warning. So when we go out supposedly on 
visitation or, or, or if you just go out talking to people. You are soul warning. You are trying to warn their soul of a heaven and a hell. That they have a choice to be made. We're not soul winning. It's God who does the winning. It's when we get in trouble, I think sometimes a lot of churches, they get involved in numbers. I think numbers are important. Numbers are all throughout the Bible. In fact, the whole book is named Numbers. I think numbers are important to God. I really do. I won't preach a message on that tonight. But it's when you get so involved in numbers and they become your God that you can get in trouble. It's not my job to say, well, we're not successful because we didn't have no visitors this week. Not my job. Well, we didn't have anybody walk the aisle and get saved, so therefore we're a failure as a church. And a lot of churches have been failures, and I guarantee you. The Bible says this last age, there's going to be fewer and fewer people get saved. This is not uh, that, that age of the church age where um, of the Philadelphia church age where people were getting saved. Well, you had thousands upon thousands. Brother... Uh, Little had a tent revival. I mean, they had good crowds, but they didn't have thousands. They didn't have hundreds. You know why? It's not a dispensation age. He said, well, so we, should we try? Yeah, we're supposed to try. The Bible says go eat to all the world and preach the gospel. It's when you get involved in the winning and you get your eyes on, oh man, we got to win some people. We got we got no, you got to warn people. You got to warn everybody. That's your job. God will do the winning. I, I've been in churches that say, Oh, we're going to have these 100 pins. I don't like this, I'll be honest with you. Because you're focusing on numbers. Have 100 pins. I want 100 people to Jesus. Well, that's good. I ain't saying that's bad. I just don't like bragging about it, to be honest with you. I don't like pins. Because what about the guy who's doing just as much as the guy winning 100 and talking to just as many people? That makes him feel like a failure. And that's not right. What if a guy's over here handing out tracts and knocking on doors and, 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 and he's doing he's faithful to what God's told him to do and yet God just didn't bless him no seed. And yet this guy over here, he could, he could bump into somebody's hey, we can say, oh, they're praying God, this is <laughs> And you know, and maybe that's the way it works. And this guy can do nothing and everybody gets saved. <coughs> so therefore. I think sometimes we can get too involved in the numbers. Get too involved in, well, if you don't have people walking through the door, you're just failure, failing. I don't think that's the case. The job is looking at, are you warning people? Are you giving out the gospel? Are you witnessing to people? Are you telling people about Christ? Are you knocking on doors? Are you giving out gospel tracts? Are you talking to people when you can? That's what we ought to be looking at. Are we doing the warning? And when we say, yes, we have been faithful to the warning, then we say, praise God, we're on track. We're on track. If we're doing the warning and we're being faithful to the warning, then we can say, man, then we're on track. God will do the increasing. We're supposed to do the planting and the water. God will bring the increase. But a lot of preachers and a lot of people want to get involved in the water. They want to push it along. And then, therefore, you give people false hope. And then they get false um, um, uh, salvations. And they get into the church, and they're no more saved than anybody. And what you got is a bunch of numbers say, hey, now we had 100 people this year. Walk the aisle and get saved. Where's that? I don't know. We had 100. So, <coughs> I don't want to, as a pastor, and it's easy to do, to be honest with you. You've been a pastor for one of Brother Jackson. It, it's easy to. Start saying, man, you know, we're not, we're not, but, well, we must be out of God's will if we're not having somebody get saved this week. Because you'll hear some big preachers, and you'll even hear some uh, magazines or newspapers say, man, you ought to be winning people every week. Well, I think I talked to 